Have you ever wanted to render other codecs than the one After Effects offers you? Have you looked through the whole internet after a way to render, for example, ProRes directly from After Effects on the Windows system? Then AEMPEG is the solution you have been looking for. With this simple script you will be able to render not only your compositions, but also videos and image sequences directly and painless from After Effects using the powerful encoder FFmpeg, but without fiddling around with commands and such. I'll start by showing you the basics. The script can be run as a simple script or as a dockable panel. The first time you run the script, the script will ask you if you want to install FFmpeg. Press yes to this. A terminal window will open and download FFmpeg for you. When it's done, you can start using the script. You start off by selecting your preferred output settings, your output path and name, and your wanted FFmpeg settings. When you're done, select the composition you want to add and press Add to Render Queue. If you don't have anything selected in the project panel, the script will use the current open composition to add. When you feel you're ready, just press Render. And there I just exported a ProRes file directly from After Effects. You can save the original file if you want by checking the Keep Original File After Render. This is good if you want to use the FFmpeg file as a proxy for example. If you want to render the original file to any other format, you have to create your own template. To do this, you go to Edit, Template, and other Render Settings or Output Module. Here you press New, select your wanted settings, and name it. When you're done, press Refresh and you will see your newly created template in the list. If you select an image sequence, the files will be saved, but you can easily add a subfolder by simply writing the name. If you create your own template that is an image sequence, it has to have the name sequence in the name, or else the script won't know it's an image sequence. Under advanced, you can pick where the FFmpeg file should be located, if you should have the original file's name and output path, or if you want to put it somewhere else. You can choose if you want FFmpeg to automatically overwrite your files. This is good if you're gonna leave the computer and just want everything to solve itself. And last, you can add your own prefix for the FFmpeg code that will be added to the batch command that AEmpeg creates. In the render queue, you'll find all the information you might want. You can see the status, the item's name, it's the name of the object in the project panel, the output name, the FFmpeg name, the render settings and output module, the original output path, if you want to keep the original file or not, the FFmpeg codec and preset, and the FFmpeg output path. If FFmpeg should overwrite the file automatically or not, your preferred prefixes, and the ID of the object. With the ID, the script knows exactly what object will be rendered even if you accidentally rename this, for example, to 12. The script will still know that it's this one it should render. To remove an object, simply press delete, and press yes to delete object. You can also duplicate your object by pressing the D button. If you want to move your object, simply hold down control and use the up and down arrow to move them. And you can simply clear all by pressing the clear all button. 
You can also select all already existing videos and image sequences from your project panel and convert them without needing to render them from After Effects first. Just select the wanted items and press add and you're done. You can also select many items and add them at the same time. For composition items, the output name and FFmpeg name will be in the name of the composition, while videos and image sequences will use the original file's name and not needly the name of the item in the project panel. If you go to settings, you'll see some more settings. Here you can check if FFmpeg is installed or not. If it's not installed, you can press this button to install FFmpeg and after check if FFmpeg is installed or not. You have the option to shut down your computer after the render is done, but if there is any errors in After Effects, the computer won't shut down, so you can read the errors the next day for example. But you can shut down even with errors if you check shut down with errors. You also have the settings to save the batch files that AEMPEG creates. This is good if something goes wrong and you want to check the code that AEMPEG generates to see where the problem might be. Last, you can import, export and merge the FFmpeg codec list. But to edit the list, you have to manually change some text and I will show you that soon. Last, you have the button Open AEMPEG Folder. This simply opens the AEMPEG folder where all the files are located, including the file AEMPEG codec. This is the text file you have to edit to change the codec list. And for the very last, you have the reset button. This resets the codec list, for example if you have messed up the text file. If the script no longer wants to start, you can simply remove the text file, but if that doesn't work, you can hold down the ALT key while starting the script, and the script will ask you if you want to reset the codec list or not. To change, add or remove to the codec list, you start by opening this text file. Many things can go wrong here, so really make sure that you do everything right or else the script might not work for you anymore. A good way to know that you're writing correctly is to look on how the other codecs are written in this text file. But I will tell you exactly how to write. For this example I will add the codec UT video. So you start by making a new row and write the name of the codec. This is the name that will show up in the codec list. So I start by writing UT video and end with a colon. In the next row I start with a dash, space and the word codec and the colon. Here I write the FFmpeg name of the codec. It doesn't necessarily need to be the name of the codec, for example jpeg2000 is libopenjpeg. But for UT video it's simply UT video. On the next row I start with a dash, space and the word wrappers and a colon. Here I write all the wrappers that the codec can read or that I want. Some codecs only have one kind and others have many. For UT video it uses AVI. FFV1 uses both AVI, MKV, MOV and NUT. And you separate them with a simple comma. In the next row I start with a dash, space and the word presets and a colon. And directly go to the next row and start with two dashes and the name of the preset. This is the name that will show up here. So for UT video I will start with RGB 24 and a colon and I will add RGB alpha. And last, YUV422. And make sure you don't forget any column. So for RGB24, I start by writing the FFmpeg code dash pix underscore FMT RGB24. For RGB alpha, it's dash pix underscore FMT. RGBA and for YUV 
it's dash pix underscore fmt yuv422p. And when you're done, you simply save the file, close the file, and restart the script. And you will find your newly added codec in the list. If you ever need help or you have forgot how to do something, you simply press the small question mark up here and it will open a help window. Here you will find everything that the script does and how to do it, including how to edit the codec list. And that's all. I hope you like it.